Did you know that your emotions don't have to control you? In a world filled with stress, distractions and difficult people, it's easy to feel like your reactions are beyond your control. The anger, frustration and anxiety you experience can feel like they take over, leaving you exhausted and mentally drained. But here's the truth. You have the power to control your reactions, and doing so can completely transform your life. If you want to protect your mental space and create lasting peace of mind, you need to master one essential skill controlling how you respond to life's challenges. Whether it's a challenging conversation, an unexpected setback, or a person trying to get under your skin, your ability to control your reactions is the key to emotional freedom. The best decision I've ever made for my mental health, learning to pause and choose how I respond rather than reacting impulsively. It's a game changer. And today, I'm going to share with you how you can take control of your emotional responses, build resilience, and protect your mental peace. So, if you're tired of feeling overwhelmed by your emotions or letting external circumstances dictate your mood, stick around, because in this video, you'll learn how to take back control and find the peace of mind you deserve. Number one, minimize the narcissist's role in your life. Imagine waking up to a day that's yours alone, no interruptions, no one's negativity clouding your mind, and a sense of calm that feels almost rare. That serene state can be yours. But let's be real when there's a narcissist in your life, keeping hold of this piece is challenging. Whether it's a friend, a family member, a partner, or even a colleague, they can fill your day with unnecessary stress and complications. They may turn your thoughts, emotions, and even decisions into a chess game where only they hold the power to play. But here's the good news. Stoic philosophy gives us the tools to minimize their role and regain control of our lives. It's not about escaping them entirely, it's about reclaiming the space within ourselves. When we think about reclaiming this space, the image of a beautiful garden often comes to mind. You wouldn't spend time nurturing the weeds in your garden, would you? Instead, you'd pull them out, leaving space for flowers to flourish. In the same way, dedicating time and energy to a narcissist is like watering weeds. Every moment you spend dwelling on their words, actions or criticisms only detracts from the time you could be investing in your own joy, passions and dreams. Imagine the days you've spent ruminating over their remarks or dissecting their motives now. Imagine what you could have done instead. That shift doesn't happen overnight though. Think back to a time when you had to make a change a change that was uncomfortable at first, but eventually you looked back and thought, why didn't I do this sooner? That's the feeling we're talking about here. By setting boundaries and minimizing the narcissist's role in your life, you'll create a path towards a more vibrant, fulfilling life. It's not just about avoiding someone, it's a profound act of self-respect, an act that teaches not only you, but others around you that your peace isn't up for grabs. But let's take a step deeper. Picture this process as setting the rules for a game where you're both the player and the referee. You decide what's acceptable, what's not, and how much space someone can occupy in your life. A narcissist might see this as a challenge, testing your boundaries as if they were limits on a map. But that's where the power of self-assurance comes in. Every time you calmly but firmly reinforce those boundaries, you're not just protecting yourself, you're rewriting your own story. You're teaching yourself to value your own well-being above the fleeting satisfaction of winning an argument or appeasing them. Sometimes this means saying no more often than you're used to or choosing to leave situations that feel draining. It may feel difficult at first, even uncomfortable, but remember the strength you've gathered from every no. You've ever said that led to something positive in your life. Every time you choose your peace over the need to engage, you're paving the way to a new, more empowered you. This choice is neither selfish nor aggressive, it's necessary. 
As the Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. That's especially true when dealing with a narcissist. Imagine their remarks, manipulation and tactics as pebbles in your shoe. Annoying? Absolutely. But what if you could stop and shake them out instead of carrying that discomfort? This is the gift of stoic thinking you have the power to control your reactions to minimize their impact. When you consciously decide to redirect your energy away from them, you're not simply ignoring the problem, you're confronting it with precision. Number two, challenge their idealized self. Let's imagine a scenario for a moment. Think of a person who always has the perfect story, the one who never fails to remind others how incredible they are. Maybe they were the hero at work or the martyr in their social circle. At first glance, it can be easy to believe in their narrative, but as time goes on, you start to see the cracks in this seemingly flawless image. And with that realization comes a fascinating opportunity. You see, there's a subtle art to unraveling the truth without having to fight. Instead, it's about creating a mirror through gentle questions and curiosity. Now, think back to a time when someone asked you a question that made you reflect, a question that wasn't meant to criticize but genuinely sparked introspection. That's the approach we're talking about here. When dealing with a narcissist, these questions allow you to peel back the layers of their self-created image without confrontation. Instead of challenging their stories head-on, asking questions like, how did you come to that conclusion? Or what was your process? Invites them to step into the light of self-reflection. This isn't about doubting them. It's about creating a space where they can look inward, if only for a moment. Here's the beauty of this approach. It's subtle like a dance. You're not dismissing them, nor are you giving in. You're maintaining control by deciding not to engage on their terms. Imagine you're a detective, uncovering the truth in a world where questions are your most powerful tool. This isn't about proving them wrong, but about encouraging a moment of honesty. With every question, you're allowing them to reveal more of themselves, sometimes even to their own surprise. And this tactic doesn't just give you insight, it gives you control over your own reactions, creating a fortress of calm that their ego can't breach. Think about the people you've encountered in your life who've taught you patience. Maybe it was a family member, a friend, or even a stranger. The patience you've cultivated from those experiences now becomes your shield. You don't need to roll your eyes or feel frustrated. Instead, by maintaining your cool, you're engaging in a higher form of resilience. Each time you choose to listen, to ask rather than react, you're reinforcing your own peace and resilience. Adopting a stance of detached curiosity, as the Stoics would, becomes a shield in itself. This isn't about taking away their light, it's about not letting their self-adulation distract you. By questioning their narrative in a way that's calm and thoughtful, you're not only protecting your peace, but you're also building a path to self-respect. You're not just surviving the interaction you're thriving, using every encounter as a stepping stone toward greater wisdom. You're learning how to inspire change, not through resistance, but through reflection, reinforcing your own inner calm. Remember, the goal here isn't to change them. That's beyond anyone's power, as Marcus Aurelius himself would remind us. The goal is to shift how their stories affect your world. Every question you ask isn't just a means of protecting yourself, it's a declaration of your independence from their influence. Number three, pursue personal growth. Through therapy, Imagine the courage it takes to look at yourself in the mirror and admit that you're ready to grow. The path of therapy isn't a public journey, but a deeply personal one. It's a quiet, courageous decision that can transform every part of your life. When dealing with a narcissist, it can feel like being trapped in an endless loop of emotional turmoil, where every attempt to change the dynamics only deepens the frustration. Yet the real victory 
The true power lies not in changing them, but in turning your focus inward, where your growth and strength reside. Starting therapy can be like opening a door to a hidden part of yourself, a place you may have avoided, or perhaps never even knew existed. The decision to embark on therapy is a commitment to self-discovery. Picture it as a brave expedition into uncharted territory, where each session is a step closer to understanding yourself in ways that once felt out of reach. In therapy, you don't wage battles against anyone else. Instead, you stand up for your inner peace, understanding that the quest for external validation is a mirage in the desert of self-doubt. Therapy becomes your battleground, where the only opponent is the version of you that clings to past hurts or toxic cycles. Think about those rare moments in life when you truly felt free, when your thoughts weren't tangled in someone else's opinions or expectations. Therapy brings you back to that state of mind, teaching you that freedom comes from within. As Seneca once suggested, true power doesn't come from owning everything, but from valuing what you already possess. Therapy illuminates this path, helping you to recognize that the peace you seek doesn't lie in changing others, but in embracing your own journey. Each therapy session is a step toward unlearning the beliefs that have kept you bound to negativity, self-doubt, or toxic relationships. It's like shedding an old skin and discovering a resilience you didn't know you had. You're not just letting go of the narcissist's influence, you're crafting a new narrative, one that's entirely your own. Therapy teaches you to take control, to become the author of your life. Number four, protect your mental space by controlling your reactions. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of a stressful situation, emotions rising uncontrollably, and you just wish you could hit pause on everything? Maybe it's a conversation with someone who knows how to push your buttons, or perhaps it's a sudden rush of anxiety that leaves you breathless. In these moments, it's easy to feel like you're at the mercy of your emotions, like a boat being tossed around in a storm. It can feel as though everything is out of your control. But what if I told you that your reactions are the one thing in this world you can always control? In fact, by mastering this, you gain something that's invaluable control over your mental space. Now, imagine a day where nothing can shake your sense of calm. No matter what happens, whether it's a critical email at work, a minor disagreement with a friend, or an unexpected setback, you remain centered. You don't react in haste or let your emotions hijack your sense of self. Instead, you take a deep breath, acknowledge your feelings, and choose how to respond. That mental space, the clarity and calmness you maintain, becomes your greatest asset in today's chaotic world. But how do we get there? How do we protect our mental space when the world around us seems designed to disturb it? The power of control. Taking ownership of your reactions. The first step to protecting your mental space is recognizing that your reactions are under your control. In a world that often feels out of control, this may seem like a radical idea. But the Stoics, ancient philosophers who faced wars, pandemics and personal loss, understood this concept deeply. They knew that while we cannot always control external events, we can always control how we respond to them. Think about the last time something upset you. Maybe it was a rude comment from a stranger, a harsh critique from your boss, or an argument with a loved one. How did you react? You've now unlocked the key to protecting your mental space by controlling your reactions. Remember, it's not the events that shape your peace of mind, but how you respond to them. The power to stay calm, focused, and emotionally balanced lies within you. It's time to take action and own it. Don't let life dictate your reactions you're in control. Start implementing these strategies today and watch how your mental resilience and peace of mind grow. Drop a hundred if you've watched this far. This shows you're part of the 0.01% who truly finished what they start.
If you're serious about making real changes in your life, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just joining a community, you're committing to your personal growth. Let's take the next step together.